and welcome to another interesting video of circuit digest in today's video we'll be showing you how you can decode ir with this stm 8s microcontroller right here and this is the ir receiver right here and we'll be monitoring it through the serial monitor that is why i have connected a usb to uart converter right here right now the usb is only providing power not anything else and as you can see this is a uh, uh, nec based remote which will be using uh, as a reference and uh, the code explanation will be all there if you uh, want to modify that feel free to do that and and um, as always you can find the detail uh, of this article linked in the description so do check that out if you are interested in the topic so let's move on to the working of the board so if i like press a button right here right now as you can see i am pressing a button and the uh, led on the usb to your converter is blinking and if i turn my camera to the to my laptop screen and you can see the data that is uh, given off by the serial monitor window so that's all for the hardware demonstration and we'll move on to our computer screen and see how the code works now let's now as you can see right now we are in the main.c file and in the main.c file we first include all the required libraries that is uh, first is stm8s.h library and second is stm8s.irlib.h library which we have made next we have defined uh, and gpio where we are using the onboard led for demonstration that is gpio 5 on the board next we have defined a variable data where the received data will be stored and we will compare that with a known value to turn on or off the led as you can see in the while uh, infinite loop more on that later i will discuss it a little bit later now we are in the main function uh, right now and in the main function we define the serial begin function and the serial print function to verify that the uart is working or not next we have the ir init function which uh, sets up the ir pin for the uh, data receiving section and finally we deinitialize the gpio uh, of the onboard led and initialize as uh, uh, output so that uh, we can get the output data and next we have our infinite loop in the infinite loop we are checking if the received data is exactly equals to uh, equals with the hard coded data if that statement becomes true we turn on the led in one statement and we turn off the led in another statement and that is all there is for this main.c file and we can move on to the stm 8 islib.h file where there is a lot of things are going on and i'll explain this a bit by bit now now as you can see we are in the stm 8 islib.h header file and at first we have to include all the required libraries that includes mainly of uh, stm 8 io libh library and stm 8 s library next we have defined the ir pin through which uh, through this pin we are reading the ir data and if you want to change the pin you have to get into this library file and change the pin on this file in order to work with this next we have defined all the required timer parameters and we have also defined a variable that is used as a counter we will see the implementation of this variable later in the video next we have defined a set of variables that is used to hold the received ir data and next we have the declared all the function prototypes that is used in this library we will be using these functions to read compute receive and print the data in the serial monitor as you can see next we have the ir init function and this function is used to call another three function those are gpio init timer 4 init and start timer function as you can clearly see these functions are pretty self-explanatory 
In the GPIO function, we initialize the GPIO and configure the pin as an interrupt pin. The interrupt will be triggered when a low pulse comes in. So next we have the timer for init function. As you can see or may know, there is no pre-built library for timer 4. So I have to use the detect port manipulation method to configure the timer 4. So to do so, you can get the reference manual of the stm 8 microcontroller the data sheet will not give you this uh, registry parameter so you definitely need the reference manual to understand and set up the timer for so if I go around this uh, section right here uh, you can see all the details about timer 4 and timer 6 and all the features and register information can be found in this file so if you want to know more de uh, details you need to go through this reference manual next we have the start timer function and this function function is pretty self-explanatory this function will start the timer when it's called next we have the ir result function this function will return the result that is calculated after the remote button is pressed and all the 32 bit long data stream has passed through to read the data we first set the gpio as standard io without any interrupt this is necessary because if we don't disable the interrupt it will continue and we will not able to read the, and we will not be able to read the data with a loop next we call another function called protocol check which is defined just below this function uh, this function is here to check the first 9 milliseconds low pulse and the second 4.5 millisecond high pulse to ensure that the next low pulse uh, that will come from here will be the start of the bit stream and it's done by and it's calculated by the timer counter and once we know the database stream is here we call this read data function this read data function computes the data and store it in the ir raw data variable as you can see right here it returns the data to the calling function so, so right here as you can see the calculated bit values will directly go into the ir uh, received data variable and if you print this variable you can see the data sent by the remote so it pretty much all there is happening right here now, as you can see in the ir result function there is a placeholder for or a value so if you call this function with a one uh, this will get passed through and if the if st uh, t uh, statement gets true uh, the output data gets printed now finally we have some timer based delay to read this kind of data we need accurate delay so i have used the existing timer 4 to generate a timer based delay and all the register information you need you can find in the reference manual so you can refer to that if you want to learn more or you can refer to our website where i have talked talked about it uh, in little details so that's uh, uh, all there is for the code part Oh, one more thing I almost forgot to mention that we have this interrupt vector file which gets auto generated when a new project is created. In order to work with this kind of interrupt, you have to define the interrupt in the interrupt vector file as you can see i have defined it right here and in the interrupt handler we also have to define the function you need to do that in order for this interrupt to work so that's all there is to it and if you have any uh, queries feel free to comment down below and i thank you for watching